Hi there. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to provision Azure SQL database table in the Databricks notebook for analysis. Therefore, let's get started. First, let's take a look at the table in the Azure SQL database. I'm going to click on this Cornerstone IT Solutions database. And then on the left hand panel, I'm going to click on the query editor. In the query editor, I'm going to use the enter ID to connect, which is much faster and much easier. So I'm currently in the editor. I'm going to click on this table to expand. And I've got these four tables, product, sales data, sales data from GCS and Superstore. We want to connect or provision this sales data from GCS table in the Databricks notebook. Before we do, let's quickly query and see the content of the table. So I'm going to perform a simple select star from sales data, GCS, and then run the query. And then we can see we have the transaction year, product, unit, price and the sales columns so we will go ahead and provision this data in the databricks notebook and then further perform analysis i'm going to come to this tab and basically i've got this my cluster which is running and i can create a new notebook so i'm going to click on this new and then create a notebook in this databricks notebook we're going to use the java database connectivity jdbc which would allow us to connect to the azure sql database and execute queries against the database and we're going to supply the host name and then we're going to be using this 41433 port and then we're going to provide the name of the database the username the password and then we're going to provide the name of the table so for the host name this is going to be the server name i'm going to come here and i can just go back to the home and then click ok for now I'm going to click back on that and then in the overview, I'm going to see the name of the server. So I'm going to copy this cornerstone it solutions.database.windows.net and then come back here and in between this open and close double quote, I'm going to paste that and then I'm going to provide the name of the database. So again, come back here so I can see this is the name of my database. So we have the SQL database. So again, control C, come back here and in between the double quotes. Control V to paste. And then for the username, I'm going to come back here and then I'm going to click on the server name and it's going to take me to the SQL server part. And then I can see the server admin, which is the same thing as the username. I'm going to copy that and then come back here and Control V to paste. We're going to stick with this JDBC driver, which is equal to com.microsoft.sqlserver.jdbc.sqlserver server driver. And I'm going to go ahead and build the JDBC URL with the encryption and trust options. So for this, we're going to have this variable called JDBC URL equals JDBC colon SQL server colon two four slash. And I'm going to pass in the JDBC host name that we define at the top here and another colon and then we're going to pass in the JDBC port which is the 1433 another semicolon here and then we're going to provide the name of the database which is now inside this JDBC database and another semicolon and then for the user we're going to provide this JDBC user in this to call it bracket and then for the password inside this call it bracket we're going to provide this jdbc password that we define at the top and then another semicolon so for the encryption this is going to be true and then for the trust server setting it's going to be set to false so that's basically how we can build the jdbc url with the encryption and the trust option so we're going to go ahead and read the data from the table that we want to connect to now don't forget we want to connect to let me quickly go back so we want to connect to the G, I mean, sales data GCS. So I'm going to click on the query editor and let me go back quickly and show you the table. So I'm going to expand and I want to connect to this sales data from GCS. So let me just perform a simple select star so that I can copy the name of the table. So sales data GCS. So I can just copy including the database owner DBO. So control C, come back here and we're going to use this df variable and this is going to equal to spark.read.format so for the format it's going to be J java database connectivity jdc and then we're going to have the option which is going to equal to the url that we define here and then for the option we're going to provide the database table which is going to be the name of the table we want to specifically connect to i'm going to control v so we're going to connect to this dbo.sales data from gcs and then for the option we're going to be using the jd DBC driver and I'm going to go ahead and load. So we're going to use the display method to display the data frame. So I'm going to go ahead and control enter to run this. Amazing. So we are able to successfully provision the sales data GCS from the Azure SQL database 
into the databricks notebook so i'm going to quickly check and say so we have the same number of columns transaction year product unit price and the sales so when i come back here i'm going to see we have the same transaction product unit price and sales so this is cool so we want to go ahead and perform a simple analysis we want to see the total sales by year i'm going to click on this to create a new code cell so we want to basically perform the total sales by year so for this i'm going to do from PySpark.sql. So we will import functions as f. So I'm going to press enter, press enter, and then we're going to go ahead and create a variable. I'm going to call this one total sales by year, and I'm going to equals, and I'm going to use the df dot group by function, and then for the group bar, I'm going to provide the name of our column. So this is going to be. I'm going to just press this tab key. So this is actually giving me this intelligence, which is nearly fine. But the name of my column is transaction here so i'm going to scroll down and make some modification to this i'm going to just type in transaction here and then we're going to have the dot aggregate and then we have the f dot sum function and then i'm going to sum the sales column this column here so i'm going to scroll down so this is not total sales but sales just get rid of this part and i'm going to alias the sales column as the total sales so i'm going to press enter and use the display method to display the total sales by year and press control enter amazing so this gave us the total sales for year 2023 2022 2020 and 2021 so this is how we can provision the azure sql database table in the databricks notebook and perform a simple analysis I trust you in this video. If you do, like, share, comment, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.